so high. So we have to complete the proof of the Lebesgue theorem. Now do you remember? Just um, remind you the statement. Okay, so we have a function f defined on an interval a b, non decreasing. And um, okay, so then we want to prove that. Uh, f is differentiable. In A, B. And, uh, okay, in, um, so almost everywhere, of course. prime is measurable and no negative and moreover we have the following inequality Okay, so uh, we already proved that uh, f is, dif is differentiable almost everywhere, okay? Proof. We did it. So this is okay. Okay, so basically we have that for almost every x in a b uh, we have that the limit uh, as y tend to x f of y minus f of x divided y minus x is define it as g of x it, it exists so g is defined almost everywhere and so we have that this is belongs to r and f is differentiable when g is finite. Okay, so we know that the limit exists, so you, we can consider the limit along a uh, sequence. So we have that g of x is equal to the limit of x plus m, um, the limit of uh, f x plus one over n minus f x divided one over n. Yes, we will prove uh, that uh, all all the other all the other uh, all the other statement that we are not proof. Uh, so we have that we can define this incremental quotient g n of x Okay, so uh, the idea is that we now we extend we 
extend. The function f on the right of b will be in this way. So we have f of x would be equal to, to f of b, so to, to the values of b uh, on the right of b to the values of f of b here. Then we have that g n of x tends to g of x uh, almost everywhere in a b. And we have that g is, is measurable, OK? OK, now we use, again, the fact that f is increasing, or not decreasing. So we have that since f is non-decreasing, uh, OK, then gn is larger or equal than 0. So by the fatu lemma, so we have the following. We have that ab g of x in dx is less or equal than the limit Of, uh, no, sorry, of um, Gn so now we use the definition of Gn this is the limit as n tends to plus infinity of n a b okay f x plus 1 over n minus f of x so this is equal to the limit of n ok now we have we translate plus b over n b plus g no, okay f of x in dx okay and uh, is the limit minus Okay, so we consider the two separately. Okay, so you have that n b, b plus 1 over n of f is equal to n the um, 
okay here it is constant okay this is f of b and so here you have f of b times 1 over n times n so this is equal to f of b and then you have that a a plus 1 over n f is larger or equal than f of a plus 1 over n this is why uh, f is not decreasing okay it's not decreasing times n so you have this is equal to f of a so at the end what you obtain is that all this stuff here is less or equal than uh, what we want so we have that so we conclude the proof <coughs> by <coughs> by noticing that g is integrable and then so it is finite almost everywhere and so thus we have that f is it is differentiable almost everywhere and uh, okay g is equal to f prime almost everywhere okay okay so what remains to prove uh, just to be uh, precise um, so you can prove by yourself that um, a monotone function is is measurable okay so for instance you can consider uh, so assume that f is um, uh, increasing you can consider you study this, uh, this set you took the infimum of, uh, of this set no? take it for instance it is c and basically you try to prove that it is either c uh, plus infinity or c like this okay in any case it is a measurable set <coughs> but try to do this uh, by yourself okay okay now we introduce a new class of function which are the, uh, the function of bounded variation Okay, so do you, read, do you already know this function? No. Okay, so we start by a function f, defined in a closed interval with values in R, and then we take a partition, an arbitrary partition of AB, a subdivision. Okay, so we denote it x naught coincide with a uh, up to the index k xk would be b and we define these two numbers so we define with p the sum of uh, somehow uh, the positive variation of f along this uh, uh, this partition 
so it would be the sum of i which goes from 1 to k of f x i minus f x i minus 1 and I take so I, I consider the sum of this gap and then I take the positive part for I, then n would be defined in an analogous way I just take uh, the negative part instead and then t which will be the sum of n and p and is this just the sum of uh, uh, the absolute values of this uh, of this gap okay Okay, so we have that F B minus F of A is equal to P minus N, which is equal to I K. Uh, so we are we are considering a telescoping telescopic series okay okay then uh, we want to uh, to consider <coughs> the supremum of this uh, of this fun of this uh, uh, this set of three three numbers uh, over all the possible subdivision of uh, of the inter of the of the interval a b okay so and we we call it with the capital letter so uh, so set P equal to the supremum of, uh, of small p, L capital N would be the supremum of uh, small n, and capital T would be the supremum of small t. And all these three supremum are, are taken take the, the soup over uh, all the possible um, partition subdivision of, uh, of the domain AB. Okay. Okay, so somehow this gives you an index of the variation of f, okay? So now we introduce the definition of a function of bounded variation. So we have that if this supremum, the one that takes into account uh, both the positive and the negative parts, is finite so if this big T is uh, okay it uh, so I get rid of the dependence of T upon F but it's okay it's, it's, it's trivial okay we say that F is a function of bounded variation okay is of bounded variation on uh, over the interval a b okay in uh, for short usually we use this this notation bv okay f is in bv okay we start to to, to see some some consequence of this uh, definition. Okay, so if uh, we have that f 
using BV of uh, AB then we have the following equality so the first one is that uh, f of b minus f of a is equal to p uh, okay p a b here uh, i meant this quantity where I, I here i stress the dependence on uh, over a b minus n a b And second, you have the T A B, the total variation, is P A B plus N A B. Okay. okay, so we start by proving one. Okay, that we have that for any subdivision of AB, we have the following. We have that f of b minus f of a is equal to this telescopic sum, 1, 2, to k to k f x i minus f x i minus one uh, okay now we have okay you understand how the things is going on you have just to express this in a proper way plus take the positive part minus the negative part so in that way at least we prove one side of uh, uh, of the inequality so this is equal to p minus n so we have that um, is less or equal than an a b plus f of b minus f of a take the supremo and we have that this is p a b is less or equal than So we have that since we are under the hypothesis, we are assuming that the function is a bounded variation. Uh, and then we have that also these two quantities is are finite in particular this one is less than t a b less than infinity and then we have that you can take this on this side
and obtain this, call this with this two. So analogously we have that we have that and so you reverse plus um, okay minus f of b minus f of a this is less or equal than B A B minus F of B minus F of A. So take the soup here. Okay, for the same reason we have that PAB is less than TAB, which is finite. So we obtain the other inequality. And so, okay, you, you gather the two, okay, minus B is larger or equal than f of b minus f of a, and so we, we are done, okay? So you have that 2 plus implies 1. And then for the third point 2, So we have that P plus N is equal to T. And this is, of course, less or equal than the supremum, TAB. <sighs> OK. Then we have that TB is larger or equal than P plus N. And we wrote this sum as um, okay, P plus P minus p plus n is equal to 2p uh, minus f of b minus f of a. Here we use uh, the step 1, point 1, and here we can conclude that this is uh, minus P A B plus um, N A B. So we have that, that for any partition. Two P is less or equal than T A B uh, plus P A B minus N A B. And then, so here we can take the supremum and then we prove one side.
Okay, so finally what you obtain PAB is less or equal than TAB. We are not we know that they are finite. Okay. And uh, and then we know also this. Uh, But we have also the following. So again, we take the supremum. call this to star this was star so I think that now we are done you combine the two and we are done Now, uh, okay. Now we s we will see a characterization of BV function. Okay. Which is the following theorem. It tells you that the V function is basically can be expressed by the difference between two monotone functions. So a function f, which is in the V of a b, uh, in the V if this is a characterization, okay? If and only if there exists, uh, okay, is, 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 or just is the difference uh, of two monotone real value functions. So somehow, the fact that it we can express a function in BV as a linear combination of mono difference of monotone function provides us with a bridge with the with the Lebesgue theorem. Okay, so this is this is why it is important. Okay. So we prove this first, this side. So we start by assuming that f is in BV. OK. OK, this is a trivial um, remark, probably. If, uh, if f is in BV of AB, f is also in BV of each of these uh, subinterval ax where x is uh, in between um, s or equal to b okay because i mean you will have that the total variation within this interval can be will be bounded by the total variation the full interval and this is finite Okay, now we want to apply 
point one of the previous lemma, so by um, point one of the previous lemma, uh, applied here, we have that um, we have that f of x, now x plays, plays the role of b minus f of a uh, is equal to uh, p a x minus p a minus n a x, okay? And so now we are done, okay? It's clear why? Because basically, for instance, you can consider, um, so express f of x as f of a plus p a x minus n a x. These two are increasing function, okay, with respect to x. You have that. If we define, so you have x. Because they can only increase because you, you add uh, no you, you add the uh, other gap so increasing function so uh, okay we are done okay, now we want to prove uh, uh, the other uh, the other implication so we start we have that if f is such that um, f of x okay actually here you should uh, we of two uh, non decreasing okay so now we assume that it is the difference between uh, for instance take uh, g of x uh, minus h of x okay with g and h uh, non decreasing function Okay, now we want to see what is the total variation. So we fix, we, we, we imagine to fix a partition. So, and so we, we want to, to establish what is T. Um, so, um, okay, you, you have x, x minus f, x, i minus one. This is equal. I use the this this property. Uh, so I have g. This is g x i minus uh, g x i minus one plus h. Uh, that's minus. Okay, minus h i plus h minus 1. Okay, this is less or equal than um, So this is basically is less than the total variation of uh, of the two. Okay, this is uh, T G plus uh, T H. Okay, probably should write T F. 
but these two are increasing so this is just g b minus g a uh, plus h b minus h a and then you take the soup And so you have that indeed T A B corresponding to F is uh, is finite. Okay. Okay, we can immediately <coughs> state a corollary. Which follows from this theorem. And this the following. You have that if f is in bv of uh, ib then we have that f is differentiable almost everywhere in a b okay is it clear why is it clear why exactly so you apply the, Le the lebesgue theorem okay fine um yeah, you just have to, I mean, so you have to, to it is the difference of two increasing functions, so they are differentiable almost everywhere. You take the union of the, of the set where the two are not differentiable, this is still um, a, a set of measure zero, and so you remove it, it's okay. Okay, then this is uh, just a remark, maybe you can prove by yourself, um, BV, of a b is a vector space so maybe you can prove that uh, um, okay t a b if you have uh, the total variation of two uh, of the sum of two function is bounded by t a b of f plus t a b of g and uh, the total variation of um, C, uh, <coughs> Cf <coughs> is less or equal than the absolute values of the total variation of f. Okay, so it's good. Okay, so some example of uh, BV function. Okay, the trivial example example are for instance non decreasing function uh, non decreasing function so you have f a b in r uh, non decreasing. Okay. Okay, another example might be for instance uh, Lipschitz function. So you have that f a b in R Lipschitz so it means that there exists some L positive such that for any X and Y in AB you have that uh, of course F of X minus F of Y is less or equal than L x minus y so basically here the idea is that you take uh, the you take uh, um, so t is the sum of okay you fix a partition of course okay uh, f x i minus f x i minus y and this is less or equal than the sum of uh, l okay xi minus xi minus 1 
and this is less than L uh, B minus I. Okay, so it's finite. Okay, you take the supremum, the supremum is still finite. Um, Okay, and then, do you think there is a relation between function in BV and continuous function? So one is containing the other, or they are no, there are no connection between them. So for instance, this is a kind of comparison uh, between C, A, B, functions which are continuous in the interval, and BV function. So, for instance, you have that BV implies the continuity. Hmm? The, the continuity, the fact that No. Sure. Yeah. No. In fact, no. Because so it means that the function C zero A B are not contained in uh, B V. Okay. Just just I mean uh, consider function like this with a jump as she suggests. Okay. I mean, this function is in, BV, is in BV because you have uh, the total variation would be just this, the jump, the length of this jump. Here is constant, may put one, my level one, but of course it's not continuous, okay? Okay, and for the other inclusion, maybe a function which is continuous is in BV or not? Yes? No. <laughs> there is no connection between them, I will show you. So here is more tricky the argument somehow. Well, no, not that much, but is in uh, what I'm no um uh, no 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 no. You, you can just I mean the idea is that um BV function has somehow uh, has to do with the variation. No? For instance, if you think of a function that oscillates very much, but it is continuous. But you, you can construct it with the trigonometric function. I will show you. Uh, the function is, uh, so the analytical is uh, x cosine of so 1 over x. So consider this function. Consider. Okay, f, just to be precise, define it for instance 0, 1 with the values in R. Uh, it's defined in a piecewise way, so f of x is equal to uh, x times cosinus of 1 over x for x uh, positive but not 0, and 0 in, in x equal to 0. So you, you immediately had the feeling that this function must oscillate very much near zero, okay? Because here you have the cosinus, which goes to infinity, okay? So it takes all the values between uh, minus one and one infinitely many times. Okay, okay, the, it is a continuous function. We have, okay, we have that, uh, the limit uh, as x goes to zero of x times cosinus of one over x is zero, so we have that no problem. F is is uh, is continuous in um, in zero one, and then uh, so I, I tried to uh, draw a picture of the graph. Um, yeah, I think it would be terrible, but I mean I tried to do so. It'd be something like 
so the graph looks like sorry this is x so as i told you it oscillates very much around zero near zero so the graph is more or less something like this so we are interested in what is happening here Okay, so uh, okay, you have that this is uh, true, of course, this is trivial. <laughs> okay, and then we are interested in those points uh, where uh, the cosinus of 1 over x uh, is, uh, is maximum, no? is, is equal to 1, the absolute values of the cosinus of x. Okay, so we divide into case, so 1 over x is equal to 1, so you would have that 1 over x must be equal to 2k pi, and we call this point xk, uh, we define this point xk as 1 over 2k pi. Uh, analogously, we, we consider the point where cosinus of one, 1 over x is equal to minus 1. These are point of, so we have to shi shift of pi, is pi plus 2k pi, so we call them, for example, with yk, and these are 1 over uh, I collect pi, and so I have 1 uh, plus uh, two, 2k, okay? Okay, so um, basically I'm interested in, in, um, in evaluating the variation along this partition, the partition made up of this point. So we, uh, we observe that fx evaluated in the point of the type xx is equal to xk, and uh, f uh, in the other point is equal to minus uh, uh, one uh, yk. Uh, so we consider the following subdivision. So we fix an index k. So we have, uh, they are put in that way, ordered in that way, xk minus yk minus 1, uh, less than xk minus 1, and blah, blah, blah. And you have y1 less, less than uh, 1, OK? OK, so um, OK, let's consider the total variation of f in the interval 0, 1. And it would be, would be f, uh, f, uh, larger or equal than the increment along a fixed uh, partition, OK? So you have xi minus xyi, with i which goes from uh, 1 to k. And this is equal from, from this, OK? This, this is equal to i 1 k. Uh, x i plus y, and then we substitute the values, and we end up with the, the harmonic series, basically. Okay, this is larger or equal. K okay, is is fixed. 1k, uh, then one of them, for instance, uh, this one. Okay, now here I perform a little bit uh, change uh, of index for, well, j just for convenience. I mean, this is, uh, goes from j, which goes from 2 to 2k, and this is uh, 1 over uh, pi times j. And this is indeed uh, the general term of the harmonic series with divergence, OK? This is as k tends to plus infinity. This tends to plus infinity. 
So basically, we prove that B, that this f is not in BV. So apparently, there are no uh, no connection between continuous function and BV function. Okay. Okay, now, step by step, we will be interested in somehow provide a generalization of the fundamental theorem of, uh, of calculus. Okay, we will need uh, some lectures to do this. And, uh, okay. So, this the topic is... Okay, so I will call this lemma lemma two. Uh, so we have that if we start um, from a differential from an integrable function, in fact, is a b, and then the function. Define it in this way with capital F, F of X, as the integral between A and X of F of T in DT. This is a continuous function. And it is a bounded variation. Okay, first of all, we want to prove that it is continuous. Okay, so we have, we want to estimate this difference. And, uh, okay, we use uh, uh, the definition. So, of course, we have AX of f of t dt minus a y t dt okay then by additivity this is x y f of t in dt okay of course okay x and x I took the uh, the absolute values okay so this is less or equal than so the absolute values of the integral is less or equal of the integral of the absolute values we already saw this Okay, and now which theorem do we do we use to to prove that that this goes to zero as soon as uh, x up y approach to x of the convex? So we it's a. Uh, it's a theorem of, me of measure theory, so we have that f is integrable. Uh, 
the absolute continuity of the integral, okay? Do you remember this? The absolute continuity of the integral tells you that if you take the integral of an integrable function and the measure of the set where you perform the integral tends to zero is small, also the integral must be small, provided, of course, the, the, the function is, is integrable, okay? Okay, by the absolute continuity of the integral, we have that. X, Y, G goes to zero as um, as the measure of okay as Y tends to X, and so the measure of the interval, uh, for instance, Y X or, or perverse goes to zero. Okay, so F is continuous. So capital F is continuous. Okay, now it remains to prove that it is also a bounded variation. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can exchange, I mean. No, 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 here I think it's a correct. I mean, took, uh, yeah, okay. Yes, took like this. Okay, so we want to prove that capital F is in BV, so we fix uh, partition of, uh, of AB, so fix uh, a subdivision of B. So we have A equal to X naught, X1, X B. And okay, of course we consider the variation along this uh, sequence, this, um, yes, this sequence. Uh, okay. A of F, uh, sin, sorry, of big F. We use the definition and and uh, this is equal to a b f t t. And uh, this is finite, okay? So you take the supremum so on the left hand, on the right hand side you have a quantity that does not depend on uh, on the particular subdivision that you took that you take. Uh, so you have that supremum of uh, of this sum <coughs> is less uh, than infinity. So the supremum is the total variation of f. Okay, so we are done. Okay, now we want to do uh, an example. Uh, so
so we consider the following function, which is uh, which is somehow is a slight variation of the previous one. Okay, f uh, maybe is defined between zero and one. Maybe that is enough. Zero if x is equal to zero. So basically, here we have x to the power two instead of the to, to instead of the, the only x of before. <coughs> so and the the question is is f so is f in B V. Okay, uh, I mean, the, the idea is, is, of course, I mean, I, I, uh, I'm doing this example after, uh, after the, the lemma, so, so probably you need to use uh, the previous, no, theorem, how we call it, no, the lemma too, okay? So probably you, you need to use, so the answer is yes. And uh, to give a rigorous proof, uh, you need to use the previous lemma. So the previous lemma tells you that uh, a function, I mean, you are sure that a function is in BV if uh, you can express it as the indefinite integral of, uh, of an integrable function, okay? So now the question is that we have to provide this, uh, this integrable function to put into the integral. I mean, the intuition says that the function that no? So what would be the function that uh, is in the integral? Okay, maybe uh, just probably it's better if, if I denote this with capital F. It would be easier to, okay, to compare with uh, the previous. Okay, so what we want to do is the following. We have this f, okay, which is, uh, by the way, is continuous. I mean, this is um, f of x uh, is continuous because uh, uh, you take the limit uh, as uh, f of x tends to zero as x tends to zero. Okay, this is just. And so we want to, what we want to do? Uh, we want to express f of x uh, in terms of where f is, uh, is integrable, OK? If, if we are able to do this, we are done. So what would be this f, the, the natural candidate? The, the derivative, no? The derivative. So we just have to check if the derivative is uh, is integrable, okay? Uh, so, um, so we have f prime of x is equal to uh, so we have two x times of one over x times x plus you have uh, I think. At the end, you obtain this. And so we have that everything, uh, there is a square. It's OK. Uh, and uh, OK, we have that everything is bounded. So indeed, and, and then you can also check, for instance, that f prime is, uh, if you take, yeah, OK, if you, if you do the, the incremental quotient, uh, uh, you, you can also prove that f prime is is continuous, okay? Also in zero. So we have that f prime. So 
we define this f as this f prime, which is integrable because everything is bounded. And so we are done, OK? So we, we are sure that big F is in BV. See, yeah, yes, yes. If you, if you do the, uh, you have to do the, the, the incremental quotient. Okay, I mean, not just uh, okay. And okay, now, okay, now I state lemma three. Then okay, this is F if F is uh, integrable. Then <laughs> we have that A of X F of T in V T. Then, okay, then if, uh, okay, if F is integrable and we have, and this holds, uh, if this is equal to zero for any x, uh, okay, so take F <coughs> in AB, <coughs> values in R, this is true for any x uh, with uh, x in between A and B. <laughs> Okay, then what you expect? <laughs> Intuition, say. This is a consequence actually of a, of a former result. F is zero yeah, so F is zero almost everywhere in AB. So why, you remember, that we prove, we prove actually with uh, uh, that if for any interval, this is larger or equal than zero, then f is larger or equal than zero almost everywhere. So you, you use this, uh, that, that result for the two inequalities and you, you get this, okay? Okay, so now. This lemma. Lemma, I mean, I will call this lemma three, lemma four. We have that if F is uh, bounded and measurable, on uh, AB. And if we define, okay, if uh, uh, f, sorry, if f, okay, and we define capital F of x as uh, um, f of a plus Okay, you can get rid of this. A x f of t in the t. Then oh, we have that f prime of x is equal to f of x for almost every x in a b. Mm, okay. Uh, okay, so j just let me observe that uh, it makes sense to define this because we have that, we start by a, a bounded function, so we are in a bounded interval, so it, it's integrable, so there's no problem. This is finite. Um,
Okay, what we can say is that uh, uh, by the one of the previous lemma, uh, this f, large f, is, is in BV because uh, it is uh, the indefinite integral of, uh, of, uh, of an integrable function, okay? And, uh, okay, so we have that from this, we have that there exists f prime almost everywhere. And, okay, now we, we want to, to quantify no? the, the what is the, the derivative. Okay, so f is, in, is bounded, so we mean small f is bounded, so we have that there exists some m such that uh, f of x uh, is less or equal than m for any x in a, b. Okay, so we want to study the, the incremental quotient. So we set uh, fn of x uh, as uh, this incremental quotient. We consider it along, uh, um, along a sequence. Uh, this should be n. We use the definition of x, x plus 1 over n, f of t in dt. Okay, so since we know, we, we already observed that f is differentiable because it's in BV, we have that, okay, since f is uh, is differentiable. Then we have that uh, th this the limit of this sequence converts to the f n of x converts to f uh, converts to f prime of x almost everywhere in a b. And then we want to use. Uh, uh, another hypothesis uh, okay so this is less or equal than m no because you have n times uh, the length, 1 over n times m. So this cancel out, so this is m. So this is, uh, so we have that we have a sequence which is uniformly bounded by m, which in particular can be viewed as uh, an integrable function. So which, which, uh, which um, convergence theorem we, we can use? The bounded convergence theorem. Okay, the, okay, the also the dominated convergence theorem, no? Okay. By the yeah, but also the bounded convergence. Uh, okay, we have that. Um, We have the convergence of the integral. So we have that f prime of x <laughs> in the x by the theorem is equal to the limit of a c of fn of x in the x, uh, which is equal okay, to the limit of n a see and uh, we use we can use the definition f x plus 1 over n minus f of x and um, okay if you if you do some computation at the end uh, what you get so at the end you you obtain the following 
you have n c c plus one because you, you have some terms that cancel out okay so f of x dx minus n of a a plus one over n of f of x okay and uh, so we know that this uh, large f is continuous because uh, we proved in, in the previous uh, in the previous um, theorem so this converts to f of c minus um, f of a which is equal to a c f of x in the x so what we found we found that the limit as n tends to plus infinity of a c f of n of x in the x is equal to f of c minus f of a then we have that AC F prime of X in the X is equal to AB okay F of X in the X uh, AC and uh, and so we are we are done because we just observed that Okay, we have that equal to zero, and this is integrable, so we have that by the lemma three, this is true for any C. So by lemma three, we have that we can deduce the point wise. Quality, and uh, so we are done. Okay. So this concludes the proof. So for today, I think we can stop here.